Welcome back, everybody. It's Jock, and welcome back to Kinesiology 247, the micro lecture. Going to hit the ground running here. I wanted to start us off with a brief snapshot of what is called the columpio de vuelo, the swings of flight. And this is in Colombia, a place where we're going to visit. And this is a unique game. You got to wonder how this was invented. Uh, but let me give you a 30 second snapshot here of this game in action. Columpios de vuelo. Swings of flight. Wow. Seems like a, a form of flight. Definitely a coordinated event. Um, I'm going to push pause here. And um, I have heard you can get pretty hurt doing this. I'm guessing it's the moments of transition. Uh, anyway, that was just a quick snapshot of a unique game. Uh, we're going to learn about a few others. Tejo and Rana um, from Colombia. All right. Let me now uh, do a quick content piece and I would like to summarize some of the key concepts from module number two. So this next graphic I have for you is a summary of the uh, what is sport and why do we play and I like visuals so I've created um, a model here that shows you that play is really the big container and then inside that our games and inside those are sports and finally pro sports. Here's my second graphic, which that just sort of shows you that these are clustered one within the other, uh, but it's a segue graphic to this third one, which gives you a little more context and fills in things like that play generally does not have rules is more of a free activity involving imagination, exploration, it's less formal, more informal, and involves self-expression. Begins in childhood, often is a, a big part of childhood, um, and is often non-competitive. Secondly, inside of that is our games and gaming, and, and that does have rules and tends to be, but is not exclusively or, or necessarily interactive um, and can be very active or inactive. Um, game is more structured though than play and then sport continuing and if you look at the bottom axes you'll see that formality, um, structure, and organization, equipment, those kinds of things tends to grow as you go from play to game to sport to professional sport and rules as well. So as we move from game to sport, we see that it turns into more of a uh, focus on the win-lose and the competition. Um, secondly, that it's organized. There are things like equipment facilities that people tend to practice and train and it often involves physical skill, but certainly there are sports like poker um, that are less physical, but certainly very mental. Um, and you could argue that that mind-body connection involves a certain level of physicality, you know, controlling facial expression, things like that in poker. Anyway, lastly, um, spectators tend to be more a part of sport than game per se, or, or certainly play. Um, and that much more so when we get into professional sport and, and work, sport as work, which involves being paid to play. So again, 
nesting concepts starting at the big end with play and then going down into finally work and professional sport here on the far right hand side or you could say that professional sport and work nests inside sport which nests inside game which nests inside play okay the third piece here since now we've taken a look at the columpios de vuelo and i did a little framing of those key concepts of um play game sport and professional sport or work i want to also just speak to the dimension where sport can be so connected to culture and a part of that too is cultural shift and being on the front edge um, and sort of parodying culture that sport tends to be one of those lenses which we can really look at explore and better understand culture so to that effect i want to play this short minute and a half video we're never alone and that is our strength because when we're doubted we'll play as one when we're held back we'll go farther and harder if we're not taken seriously we'll prove that wrong and if we don't fit the sport we'll change the sport we know things won't always go our way and the world's sporting events are postponed or cancelled but whatever it is we'll find a way and when things aren't fair we'll come together for change we have a responsibility to make this world a better place and no matter how bad it gets we will always come back stronger because nothing can stop what we can do together Okay, I want to take a minute just to hone in on what exactly is culture when we look at culture. And I talked about this a little bit that it involves these points that we can really grab onto and observe that are readily available, things like language and custom beliefs, rules, art, knowledge. This would include things like dress, food, music, uh, religion. Um, those are these things that we can look at, see, observe. And then there are the collective identities and memories um, developed by these social groups that make their social environments meaningful. So there's a gestalt, there's a conceptual piece that people hold collectively. Um, and then there are also these ways that it's manifested, like language, custom. Um, and then lastly, um, we look at institutions, organizations, groups, and how cultures might differentiate in terms of racial, ethnic, class groups, the role of culture in producing inequalities and group boundaries. So a piece of this is the equity piece um, and looking at how cultures can be stratified and how there can be elements of injustice um, inequality, marginalization, um, and how these can be organized around different things like race, class, uh, gender, um, sexual orientation, um, different identity pieces. So I wanted to r really keep it broad at this point in terms of what culture is. Um, and especially just hone back in on this basic definition that it's about commonly shared values, beliefs that help define and give meaning to a group of people. Okay, so with that, we can wrap up module number two, the core concepts for the class, play, game, sport, professional sport, 
and of course culture. Have a great week, everybody.